Ahoy there! Welcome back to the Meerkats from Mars SMP, where I am broke. Last episode, I kicked off our village upgrade project with this big, beautiful skull whirlpool. But looking this good ain't cheap, and to make this magical maelstrom glisten, I used just about every single diamond I've acquired in the past year of playing on this server. Before this build, I had just over a stack of diamond blocks, and now I'm down to... Four di I've only gotten four diamonds! Oh, that's actually worse than I thought. For goodness sakes, four diamonds isn't even enough to bribe a judge. So today I'm setting out to get rich quick so I can buy all the building materials I'll need to finish this place before the competition's deadline. Let's see how many diamonds I can pillage and plunder in just one single episode using only my shops and building services. I've already got two jobs lined up including the tavern interior for Luke and the shopping district's harbor for Mayor Zoe. But to maximize today's haul of diamond doubloons, I'll also be on the lookout for any other bargains and odd jobs I can find. I can honestly say I have no idea where today's adventures will take us, but I know what I'm good for on this server, and something tells me this episode is gonna have a lot of builds in it. So let's leave this briny deep, hoist the mains, and set sail, cause this bankrupt buccaneer's got some build bounties to bring in. Looks like Edie started his wall. <gasps> Actually, let's go see if he's willing to pay us some diamonds in exchange for a bit of help. Hey, Dingy, how's it going? It's good. Looks like you're trying to build a wall. Can I help? Uh, if you want to. Is this some kind of to. trick? <laughs> What's your no, angle here? No, no strings attached. Maybe a few diamonds, if you can spare them. Maybe a few diamonds. Um, well, how much are you willing to build a section of the wall for? From each warp log pillar, that's one section. So, okay. So, what do you think? Six um, diamonds? Seven diamonds <laughs> per section? That's it. Let's call it an, an even block for each section. Um, um, and then I'll throw in the towers for free. How about that? Oh, oh, that, that's, that's a deal. Good. Let's shake on it. <laughs> all right. Nice. We got our first deal of diamonds. And all we've got to do is build this tiny little wall for Edie. You know what? I'm feeling generous. Let's throw in a little landscaping for free. Slab, wart, and this is clay. Okay, this wall is admittedly a little longer than I expected, but we're gonna get paid lots of diamonds. Whee! And a stair, and a stair, slab. Okay, finally, the last tower, rhinestone, and then a stair, and that's it. Oh, all right. Now all I have to do is the other side. Ooh. All right. Well, we're finally done. Let's go collect all our diamonds from Edie. Hey, Dingy. Hello. How Thanks are you? for your help. The wall looks really good. You did a really good job here. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, did well worth the money, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what? I was kind of expecting you to pull a fast one, but you really came through. Yeah. Um, I think it was I'd one. Probably be They'll be building the walls right now if you didn't come by. Mm. I, I hope you uh, <laughs> recommend my services to anyone in need. These guys are finally pacified. I'm trying to figure out, like, if you're already inviting these guys in, who you're trying to keep out. N not inside. They're just patrolling the walls. So, um, yeah, the matter of payment. I think we agreed on, on one diamond block per wall section. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I, I didn't have a lot of diamonds when you came by, but I did go mining and I got you Ooh. your diamonds. You know what? Here, just take it all. Ooh. Take all <gasps> your diamonds. What? That's a whole stack. Wait, where did you get yeah. all this time? You said you you just got you know, these? I, I, didn't, I didn't know Mojang added diamond block veins in the last update, so it was pretty easy to get diamonds now. Diamond block veins? <laughs> yeah, I found them in a semi deep dark biome. It was like um, in a spiral going down a drain, kind of like a whirlpool, you know? Uh, anyway, I gotta go. Thanks for your help. Wait, wait, 80. Those are my diamonds. Get back here. Ah! Oh, that lily livered, bilge sucking, horn swoggling landlubber. Oh, if he thinks this is over, he's got another thing coming. Well, actually, it kind of is over. 
for now at least. I'll have to think of a way to get back at him for that later on. But in the meantime, let's head to Luke's village entry to haggle a price for his tavern interior. <sighs> After that experience with Edie, I think it's gonna be a relief to work for someone a little more trustworthy. Huh. You know, I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's something about Luke's choice of decor that makes me worry he might not be the reputable businessman I thought he was. I don't know. Maybe it's all in my head. I'm sure these goods were bartered through honest trade. Huh, I guess that must be his business logo or something. I mean, that's technically not a red flag. Uh, what am I thinking? It's Luke! He would never do me wrong. Is there like a ladder or something? Ah! Yeah, I'm gonna tread carefully with this one. Hello! Oh, I see you've got a, uh, a new outfit. Yeah, I got a new kind of business recently, just because we meet. Yeah, it's a booming little town. Lots of industry and commerce. Um, you had yeah. some uh, some cages. Presumably those are for disco dancing and nothing nefarious. Uh, definitely, yeah. definitely disco dancing. You got some nice, beautiful mangrove swamps and you know, yeah we are sheltered you know from the environment and everything mm -hmm. so presumably from regulators and people as well oh we love regulators yeah 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 mm. they disco dance a lot you know <laughs> whenever they come up. <laughs> so um last time i saw you you were gonna hire me for an interior for your tavern i've got a few different ideas and i just wanted to double check you know what is the price range so here we're quite rich in like in in gold, as you can imagine. Um, no. Well, or about edible gold. This is not of your interest, I'm, is it? Yeah, I'm. I'm more interested in diamonds, if I'm honest. You know, they, they come in individual diamonds. They come in block form. I'm more interested in the block form. I will admit. Um, um, well, all I have are these. These the thing you're looking oh, for. Oh, yep. The, those are the. Uh, those are the little nuggets. Yeah. That's great. I have Sundan with me. Yeah. Yeah. I have. Uh, six. Yeah. Six, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how far six diamonds is going to get me. Can, can we get, like, some kind of arrangement then? Um, well, that's pretty much all I got. Okay, how about this? I go build it, mm -hmm. and then you know, at some point you can go check it out and see what you think it's worth. That sounds yeah, fair? Yeah, definitely sounds pretty fair to me. I will do some more planning around, see if I can get a few more diamonds for you, just just in case, okay? okay? And then I'll have a look to see how much your work is worth. Sounds good? Sounds good. All right, I will get started. All right. And do you feel like you need to, like, refresh yourself a bit, mm. you know? Just walk. Uh, well, I don't have the plank, but uh, you can almost walk well, the plank. Well, this feels like a threat. Nah, uh, nah, this ah! is just business. I'm getting flashbacks to um, to the balloon. To the balloon. Yeah. Oh, you remember the balloon, huh? We can make a kind of a, a thing about it. You know, every time we meet, I'll just push you off of something. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, six diamonds would technically more than double my current wealth. But hopefully, if I go all out on this tavern job, he'll throw in a very hefty tip. Oh, and first things first. In case you guys thought I didn't read the comments, this is for Pedro. Huh, yeah, I think that is better. Okay, so let's recap what we've got to work with. As you can see, Luke's already built the exterior for this tavern building, and it looks great! So I'm gonna try my best not to change the outside appearance. But the inside definitely needs work. We've got this first floor, which I think I'll turn into a medieval pub. Up on the second floor here, this could be where the innkeepers live. And finally, I'm gonna split this top floor into a few hotel rooms for overnight lodgers. Let me get to work and I'll see you when it's done. Let me give you a quick tour. First off, we've got our tavern pub. I divided up the space using these rafters. These bar stools are actually a lightning rod sticking through the head of an armor stand with a leather helmet. I've cheated a little bit by using one of our service data packs that lets you make armor stands invisible, but even if you don't have that in your world, this trick will still look pretty convincing. And to add a little contrast, I've dotted around a few of these checkered banners to match the one Luke has hanging off the side of the building. I didn't have space inside for a proper oven or anything, so. So instead, I added a few campfires to show that the chef cooks all their meals out here. Down here behind the bar, we've got some shelves of meat ready to be cooked, as well as plenty of barrels of things like butter and rum and mead. This place could probably do with just a little extra pinch of life, but at some point when he's not busy pranking me or stealing my diamonds, I think Edie's gonna come through here and put together some custom armor stand decorations and scenes. 
Okay, moving up to the second floor. Out here on the balcony, there's some vegetables growing for the cook to use in their meals downstairs. Plus I've got a table and some chairs so lodgers can sit and admire the view, which I must say is phenomenal. Luke is a wizard for putting all of this together himself. Down the hall here, I had a bit of an awkward space. Wasn't really sure what to put here. I ended up turning it into a sunroom with a spice garden and a mini balcony, which I'm quite happy with. I've got shelves here for drying out herbs and, oh, right. I also decorated this corridor with a few random banner designs to represent some of the factions or noblemen that might have passed through this inn at some point or another. The rest of this floor is taken up by the innkeeper's apartment. I've just got some flowers, a little kitchenette with a stove, and a bedroom back here with some storage and a wardrobe. <laughs> they don't have a lot of clothes. Okay. Last but not least, up these stairs, we've got the lodging rooms. I designed this first room with fancier guests in mind. There's just the one bed, so this guest gets plenty of privacy. We've got some storage and this little nook for a wash basin. Yeah, I like it. Room two is awful. <laughs> this is where you'd probably put your gap year backpackers. There isn't much in here in terms of furniture or amenities. These people aren't here long enough to unpack or get settled. And to make this room really unappealing, here is the bog. Oh. Oh no, even, oh, oh. oh. On to room three. This is where I think I'd probably stay if I was at the inn. <laughs> it's a little cozy, but there's some nice decorations in here and these people actually have their very own fireplace. And finally, we've got room four. This is for your long-term lodgers. They've got more of a proper apartment in here, their own bathroom, a small private balcony, and there we go. I think that's all there is to see. I'll let you know whenever Edie ends up adding those custom armor stand decorations to this place so that you can go and check out the final product on his channel. Maybe tell him to pay me. For now though, I'm gonna message Luke and let him know it's ready for him to come check it out. Hopefully he thinks it's worth more than six diamonds, but I will take what I can get. While we wait for that, I've lined up another odd job for a meerkat called Sufficiently Personal or Suf, as I call him. He says he's digging out a big hole for some farms and he's offering payment to anyone willing to help out. I've done quite a bit of digging on this server to make all those subway tunnels, so this should be done in no time. Uh, <laughs> that's a much bigger pit than I thought it would be. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm gonna need to use up my gunpowder reserves on this one. TNT in this game because I'm always paranoid about damaging builds or something, but I've got to say that I enjoyed that quite a bit. I'm sure there are far more efficient ways to clear out an area, but one benefit of the method I went with is that I could stop it at any time whenever I spotted diamond ores. I haven't even been paid yet and this is already a better deal than the one I made with Edie or Luke. Suf says he hid the payment in my base somewhere, so we can go check that out later. Our next stop is actually gonna be the shopping district. I wanna check to see if there's any diamonds waiting for me in the shops. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, this isn't a bad haul. Let me just restock these real quick. All right, cool. So I think I've already shown you all my shops in previous episodes, but they only make up a very small portion of this server's ever expanding shopping district. Even though we're still missing tons of different types of shops, this mushroom island is nearly filled to the brim. That's why back in episode four, Mayor Zoe hired me to design a marina expansion to the shopping district. This is gonna be the easiest money I make today because as part of my day job as a civil engineer, I've designed a few harbors in real life. That means that I know what ingredients make up a good harbor design. Shelter, moorings, navigation, and facilities. Usually this is the part of my episodes where I talk about what we're gonna try and accomplish, but this time I could just show you. And that's because I live in Canada, a country with nine seas and oceans, hundreds of bays, and nearly twice as many lakes as the rest of the world combined. All that water means I've got a nearly endless supply of nearby harbors to use as inspiration. So let's turn on some shaders, place down a boat, and set off to look for one. 
Uh, so it's only just within runner distance, but down the coast there I've spotted the perfect reference. Meaford, Ontario. Let's go see what methods it uses to meet those four requirements and then work out how we can incorporate them into the shopping <laughs> oh, the, the shopping district harbor design. Whoo! I always forget how fast Minecraft boats are. And we're here! So let's go through our four requirements for a good harbor design, starting with shelter. The first important role of harbors is to shelter boats from the turbulent and wavy seas surrounding them. We have the weather cycle turned on in Canada, and to protect its vessel from those massive storm waves, Meaford uses a rubble mound breakwater. This works like a suit of armor, creating a safe and sheltered space for boats behind them. Harbors have used breakwaters for centuries, and while we can build them much bigger these days, we haven't really changed much about their design. On the surface, this might just look like a simple pile of rocks, but underneath those outer boulders is... <gasps> Yeah, more rocks, it's just, it's just rocks. Let's add some shelter to our shopping district harbor design. We don't need protection from waves coming from the east since they're already blocked off by the main mushroom island. However, our fleet of floating shops is very vulnerable to storms hitting us from these other directions. So let's line those edges with breakwaters. Okay, so everyone's safe from the waves now, but before we move on, we need to add an entrance or two so that Luke's boat there can get in and out. We can't just punch a hole in the sides. We need to find a way to block out the waves while still letting Luke's boat pass in and out. Meaford's modern marina makes use of the fact that unlike boats, waves are very bad at turning corners. Therefore, we could put a windy entrance channel anywhere along our harbor without having to worry about waves getting through. However, bigger industrial vessels aren't built for such tight turns. If we want to build a straighter entrance channel, we need to consider the fact that waves build up gradually over long distances. By pointing the port entrance toward the closest nearby shores, big boats like this one can get in and out with ease. And on days like today, where the waves are coming from the open ocean, the breakwater still does a great job keeping the water inside the harbor as smooth as glass. The nearest landmasses to the shopping district harbor are Mount Taco down to the south and this mountain range to the northwest. Therefore, I'll have our windy entrance down here by the trader and our main entrance over by the lighthouse. Okay, cool. So now that our boats can get in and out, let's give them some moorings. The goal here is to make sure our ships don't blow away in the wind or drift off by the current. The simplest way to do this is to just drop an anchor and send out a landing party using boats small enough to pull up on the shore. But for anchors to work best, you need a really long anchor line, and that means you need to clear a very large area in case the wind changes. This is handy when you don't have any other options, but it's a pretty inefficient way to pack boats into the harbor. Plus, it makes loading and offloading a nightmare. Instead of anchoring our boats, you could anchor a platform from multiple directions to stop it moving around, and then boats can just sail over, tie up, unload, and sail off again. We can then connect a few of these in a chain leading all the way to the shore, then top it off with a gangplank to account for high and low tides. These are called floating docks, and there are about a million great things about them. They'll always be at the right height for your boat, they can be used in very deep waters, they can be fitted with dock cleats, bumpers, canopies, solar powered lights, and even hoses and cables so that boats can access drinking water and the power grid. And best of all, they're super easy to rearrange to match the constantly changing needs of a harbor. There is a downside though. If too many heavy ships moor up, the anchors will get dragged along the harbor bed. We can make these anchors heavier, but the added tension would cause the anchor lines to snap. Therefore, just like these service docks here, we can put those heavy anchors along the shore and hold out the docks using metal stiff arms. Let's Add some stiff arm service docks down here by the south entrance. Ugh. Ever since 1.18, it feels like it rains all the time. As boats get bigger, the anchors have to get bigger too, and after a while they're just gonna start looking ridiculous. How about instead we use piles? These are posts driven deep into the harbor bed and they're much harder to move around. Some harbors put runners on their floating docks so that they move up and down with the tides, but all those moving parts make this alternative a little bit pricey. Plus, we've lost all the versatility that made floating docks great while still having to deal with the fact that they break pretty easily. So why don't we just clamp the deck surface directly to these piles or even just pop it on top? This type of dock is called a pier if it's sticking out into the water but it's called a wharf if it runs along the coast. Because waves just pass right underneath piers and wharves, these can be built anywhere. They don't even have to be behind a breakwater. But when they're completely unsheltered, waves can still hit all of these piles pretty hard. So to minimize all those impacts, piers built out into open seas use more spread out piles than to compensate for the loss in stability, they're reinforced with some bracing or a truss. Let's add a pier so that we have somewhere for heftier boats to dock. This wool shop, this, 
This wool ship. This wool shop ship. Ship shop. This boat has been around on the server since basically day one. Let's finally give it a wharf so it can tie itself up. Okay, so we've got a few moorings that can hold some heftier hulls, but there's always bound to be a bigger boat. To make our mooring strong enough for naval flagships, cruise liners, or cargo vessels, instead of spreading these piles apart, we're gonna squeeze them together until they form a solid wall. Then fill them into the brim with heavy rocks and gravel. This is now called a jetty if it sticks out into the water, or a key if it runs along the coast. Just like this fishing port, we could build our keys out of these inter locking steel sheet piles. We don't even need to use piles for this. We can also use a wall of heavy bricks or masonry. Keys and jetties are so strong, they can actually be used instead of breakwaters. That means we can replace some of our rocky breakwaters around the edge with keys and jetties, giving us way more usable space. Awesome, so now every type of boat has a mooring somewhere in the harbor. Let's make sure they can navigate to them safely. Let's make sure our docks and boat slips are spaced far enough apart and add a nice wide channel along the top here. We also need to make sure these channels are nice and deep so that ships don't run aground. The waters to the east of the shopping district are definitely deep enough already, but if your harbor is a bit too shallow, you can just dig it out using a dredger like this one. Just as roads are littered with comprehensive systems of lane markings, signs, shapes, and colored lights, we need to do precisely the same thing with our waterways so that boaters know how to use these channels safely. Let's start with the basics. Red and green. These colors refer to port and starboard, which are just the names of left and right on the boat. They're shaped differently too, with cans for port and cones for starboard. In combination, these colors are used to mark out shipping lanes using buoys and signs. I should quickly mention that as some countries drive on the left and some on the right, channel buoy colors are flipped around the other way in every other country outside of the American continents, except for Japan, Korea, and the Philippines. We don't need to mark out the whole ocean with these buoys, and we don't need to accompany every red buoy with a green one. Like Meeford, we're just gonna add a handful of buoys and signposts around each entrance to help people plan their approach and stop them from cutting corners through any areas you don't want boat traffic. Okay, we've placed all our reds and greens. Let's throw in some yellow. Yellows. Yellow buoys warn sailors that they're getting too close to something dangerous. So I'm gonna put a few in shallow areas of the harbor where boats might run aground or get caught up in weeds. They didn't always have fluorescent buoys like these available, so to give our harbor a little more history, I'm also gonna add one or two small rows of old timber piles. These would have been used sort of like bumpers, making sure boats don't drift into dangerous spots. I'm not gonna go over what all the other colors and symbols mean, cause we've gotta keep moving, but buoys are an excellent way to add decoration, detail, color, and story to any body of water. So I strongly encourage you to look some of them up when taking on maritime builds. All right, thanks to Meeford's magnificent marina, we're now three for three on our checklist. But before we can call this a good harbor, we need to make sure it has all the facilities a maritime meerkat could ever want or need. We've already got some of these covered. Information booths, check. Beaches, check. Lighthouse, check. Farmer's market, check. Obligatory oversized anchor, check. Harbor master's office? Well, I think Zoe's gonna be our harbor master, right? And I already made her that office tower, so yeah, check. Okay, what else? Planters, benches? Yeah, we could do with a few more of those. Electricity and water for boats? Eh, yeah, why not? Lookouts? Sure. Add to cart. Birds? Ooh, yes. Some of the stuff we probably don't need, like, we're on an island with no cars, so a parking lot would probably be a poor use of space. We don't really need boat launch ramps either for the same reason, and I don't think Henners is planning to drop this yacht into the water anytime soon, so we don't need a boat crane. I also don't want to hog all the fun for myself, so I'm gonna leave it to other meerkats to work out whether we need things like giant Muskoka chairs, coast guard boats, public bathrooms, fish gutting rooms, things like that. Oh, oh wow, no. This place smells even worse than the bathroom at Luke's Tavern. All right, I've got to be honest with you guys, I think Meeford might have itself a very good harbor. And thanks to this little adventure down the coast, so do we. But let's not forget, our goal today is to earn as many diamonds as humanly possible. But after all our hard work, the only thing I have to show for it is six measly diamonds from Luke, a bunch of ores I had to mine up myself, and a gross slimy whirlpool. Thank goodness my shops have at least been doing well. If I'm gonna turn my luck around, a good harbor isn't gonna cut it. We need a great one. And where better to find great tips for a great harbor than the city with the greatest population in all the Great Lakes? I am referring, of course, to Toronto. 
let's take a super quick look and see if there's anything else we can learn from it that might earn us a few extra diamonds from Mare Zoe. This is a much bigger harbor than the one in Meaford, so I don't think I can just plop down my boat here and sail around like I did last time. We could see if Luke's friends over there are willing to give us a ride, but I feel like they probably just pushed me overboard at some point. Mm, you know what? I think I have a much better idea. Let's review some of Zoe's requirements and make sure we've got everything covered. Mm -hmm. I was thinking we should keep the color scheme just because it looks good. I like it. For that, let's look at Toronto's shelter. We've got all the usual breakwaters and jetties, but Toronto is a great example of a natural harbor, meaning all the natural landforms and islands around it already provide most of the shelter it needs. Let's incorporate a few natural features to the northern edge of our harbor. I'm going to stick to the Mushroom Island theme, but I'm going to do my best to capture the magic of all these meandering rivers through Toronto's islands. The Wandering Trader has also needed an island under it for a long time, and I have a feeling Zoe's going to be very pleased if we manage to incorporate that into our design. Next! We're gonna run out of land soon. Okay. Is that something that your facility would be able to assist me with? Okay, let's see what moorings this place has. Floating docks for smaller ships? Check. Piers and wharves for bigger boats? Check and check. Jetties and keys for our vastest vessels? Check. But I can spot another type of structure, something even stronger than keys and jetties. For centuries, Toronto has been digging out building foundations, subway tunnels, and dredging out the harbour bed. All that dirt needs to go somewhere. Why not use it to make more build plots? A huge portion of the city's skyline, including the CN Tower itself, is sitting on top of what used to be open waters. Ship shops? Uh... Shop ships? Ugh. Boats like these are great, but they can be built anywhere in the surrounding seas. Let's use this opportunity to extend out the shoreline and introduce a significant amount of new land for store shores. Sto shore stores. Ugh. Chives. Chives. A show for named chives is what you will have. Once again, we've got our red and green channel markers, and we've got some white hazard buoys around the airport so tall ships like this one don't get bonked on takeoff. But beyond these buoys, there's a lot to look out for in this harbor. That's why the safest way for Torontonians to cross these waters is by ferry. That way, they don't have to know anything about buoys and what they mean. They can just sit there and go for the ride. I'm gonna use my patent pending Lazy River design to create a ferry route that goes all the way through our harbor. Maybe even all the way around the island someday. I won't have time to explain how to build these in this episode, which is why I've just released a dedicated tutorial for them. If you're interested in building these lazy rivers in your own worlds, I encourage you to check that out. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description just in case. All right, last up, we have facilities. Do whatever <laughs> makes your heart happy. Toronto Harbour is equipped with all sorts of accessories. There's streetcars, bike lanes, parks, music gardens, skating rinks, police boats, industrial mills, restaurants, breweries, performance venues, tourist traps, roller coasters, a long beach, a short beach, a nude beach, and beaver tails. <laughs> Honk. But the feature that makes the most hearts happy is its boardwalk. Torontonians can walk the length of the city's shoreline along a continuous series of waterside walkways decorated with an array of statues, kiosks, and lush gardens. Let's add a boardwalk all the way around our harbor, including along the breakwater to the west. Then to make sure pedestrians can get across the entrance channel, we can use bridges like this one, which open up to let through all the tall boats and masts. Now that is a great harbor design. Let's just double check we haven't forgotten anything. You just have to design it and then all of us can help you build it. All right, yeah, I think we got it all. Let's go meet Zoe so we can hand it over and collect our payment. Right, or so... I'll pay extra and you can build all of it.
Hi, Zoe. Hey. I got comfortable. I made a bench. <laughs> you want to come sit? That's quite nice. <laughs> well, actually, do you want to sit in your berry? I'll introduce you to Chives. Hello, sir. Hi, Chives. There you go. Here's the advancement. All right, let's set off. Oh, my gosh. All right, let me show you the harbor. Oh, my gosh. So wow. here's the entrance. Oh, uh, my gosh. This view is so cool. Right? So we got this uh, this bridge here. It's in the middle of opening, but I have just put a chain there across. Some people might want to jump it. Some people might want to play it safe. We've got some floating docks in here. I've been working with Henners behind the scenes to make sure that some of these docks are the right size for the boats he's got planned. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in F5 mode. I just like in amazement. <laughs> This is the Lazy River. I remember I mentioned I was going to add a public transit option for the shopping district harbor. This is it. Yeah. So you got wow. your ferryman chives there, as ordered. Uh, not all of these guys have names. The sheep is named because it's a Jeb sheep. We got these little platforms all over the place, like this one here. And we got a little canal to go through. Above us right now, wow. I've got some kind of reclaimed land. So there's lots of new space for building shops and things like that. Along here, you can see the bridge is new. So all of this stuff on this side of us is brand new space for building shops on. This is actually what used to be the coast. I've turned into a riverbank. Um, I shortened your pier a little bit, but it's still got boats and things in it. Yeah, here wow. we've got a wharf along here, and this borders up nicely with our wool shop. We've got this plot of land here on this side, um, which is new as well. Yeah, I... There's more space, this is a down, lot of space down there. I've added a lot of vegetation and plants. Um, yeah, I love the coral as flowers and the planters. Oh yeah, I've got the flags over Those there. Those look really nice. Yeah, I wasn't sure which colors to go with, but apparently Mars has a flag with those three colors. Also got some lookout points with some spy glasses. Here's the second entrance. The Lazy River can come out this way and circle around the whole island. Uh, yeah, sort of run out of time. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, yeah. here is the wandering trader. He got... finally got an island. Yeah, he got his. He finally got his island. Great view of the castle as well. I've decorated it a bit. Yeah, um, it looks really good. I'm gonna leave it to you to determine if it needs more, and if okay. so, what that should be. Yeah, cool. Yeah, this is really cool. So yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's this is awesome. the whole place. So uh, I'm yeah. assuming that you take checks, right? Yeah, that works. Okay, <laughs> how am I supposed to throw? Oh, because I can put it in the llama. Oh yeah, I guess. Does he, he have sit. a chest? Um, wait, hold up. No, he doesn't. Bye. <laughs> I'll, I'll be back. I get, I'm just making a chest quickly. Oh look, here they are. Here's the crew. They're all lined up. How Rolling sweet. through. Yeah. Oh my gosh, um, I love that. All right, so if you sit. Oops. Onto the... Oh, there. oh, there we go. So, um... Yeah. You happy? I am more than happy. This is way more than I ever would have imagined when I was like, hey, let's build a marina. Like, this is wonderful. Good to hear. Oh, there's stuff. Yeah, I thought it was going to take a lot longer to build, if I'm honest, but... Oh, me too. You were like, yeah, I'm going to get it done next week. And I'm like, what do you mean you're going to get it done next yeah, week? Like, I was like, isn't this going to take like three it? months? <laughs> I absolutely love how you incorporated oh, the... Uh, I love how you incorporated the... Uh, oh, the wool, the wool the, ship? The, yeah, the first ship of the server. Like, you know, it was like... Oh, the payment. Did you... <laughs> I didn't actually... Did you... Yeah, you no. didn't take it out? Uh, it's still in there. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> Yoink. Uh, <laughs> this is this is a lot of diamonds. I definitely didn't think I'd end up even richer than I was last episode. Oh, and this isn't even all the diamonds we earned today. Let's head back to my base and work out where Suff hit his payment. Okay, he's been giving me clues. Apparently I'm sitting right on top of it. Um, no. No. Um, oh, I'm sitting on it. I don't know if I mentioned this on camera, but after I made so good that custom birch tree, he made a statue of me sitting on my little viewing bench as a thank you. Aha! Oh, this is a cool little cavern. All right, I think he agreed to give me about a stack of diamonds. Two stacks? Okay, there are some generous tippers on this server. And let's see how many I got from all those ores I mined out. 
<laughs> Wait, and if we add that to the diamonds from Zoe and the money from the shops, it would feel so weird holding this many diamonds in survival. This. This is a lot of diamonds. All right, well, we've probably got more diamonds than I'll ever manage to spend on this server, but before we can call it a day, we've got to go pick up our payment from Luke for his tavern. Hopefully he thinks that was worth more than six diamonds, but I I don't think I need any more. Ahoy! Ahoy there. I understand you've been I... to go see the interior I built. Yeah, I've seen your work. I was very impressed, and luckily I came across a few extra diamonds recently. So here it is, the initial six diamonds. I think you deserve six blocks too as well. <gasps> These mean the most because they come from you. Ah, thank you so much. You're so kind. Yeah, that's that's why I like to do business with you. Do you have any other builds you need me to do? Me and my crew, we are thinking about building a ship. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. Right. So just one thing is like, we don't have any diamonds to pay you right now. So you have to think about this as, as an investment. What is it? You know what? I've earned so many diamonds today. I think what I want is just a joyride, if that makes sense. That's what we like to hear, yeah. but we're not very good at sailing here, so... <laughs> <laughs> Making a lot of sense why all your boats are shipwrecked. So yeah, let's um, um, build a boat and then we can go for a joyride. Maybe I can give you a sailing lesson. Excellent. Deal. Are you ready for a sailing lesson? Let's do it. Teach me how to do this and let's go. I actually have a destination in mind. Do you want to steer us over there? Sounds good to me. All right, if you take charge of the helm, I can untie us and we'll head off. I love that you put your company's logo on the sail there. It's a nice touch. Of course, it's company property, you know? I've been seeing that all over the place today. You guys are doing well. All right, Luke, I need you to turn us to port. Nice and gentle. All right. And you ready? We're ready. And... Uh, Oh, 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 easy. Yeah, this is perfect. We're definitely on the right heading now. All right, do I just drop the anchor then? Yep, just off the side. Now that we're anchored, get the landing crafts ready. It's time to head to shore. Okay, let's go. All right, so let's use this opportunity to restock the ship with supplies. And we just grab any of this, right? Right, exactly, yes. For example, let's say we were gonna take this pile of stuff here. This is here for ships just like us. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, my company loves these kind of things. All right, now I was going to suggest we just stow some of this stuff away, but your cargo hold's taking on a little bit of water. Ooh, you got gunpowder in here, I see. Let's just double check that it's dry. Okay, yeah. Let's it working? See yep, uh, cover your ears. And... It sounds pretty dry to me. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. I think we should still just double check. You know what, I think we gotta check that the other barrels are dry too, just in case. That was kinda nice, thank you so much for the lesson. How many no diamonds worries at all. are you? You know, I think what I've learned is that the real treasure isn't actually diamonds after all. What do you mean? What's the real treasure? Revenge! Uh, <laughs> Um, 
No, get away. Ah! 